there's that button, let's go. Share screen, we are in Sticky Learning Lunch, people. Good to be here. Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch. We've got that midweek feeling, which I don't believe in. We've got a hat full of people that have arrived. We're just waiting for the next few people to come in. As always, Abby, hello again, Abby. Good to see you. Colin, thank you for being here. Fabian, very welcome as always. Lynn, good to see you again. Petra, thank you very much for being here again. Tim, Tracy, Victoria, beautiful. Thank you so much for your investment in yourself and engaging with the content today. Just a few more seconds while we get those people in the room. Another mouthful of tea. And then we're gonna dive into today's content. Let's get ourselves set up while we're just waiting for those to arrive. As always, never changes. It's the same distractions that we always put into our days. Mobile phones, flight mode, zero out of distraction, 100% attention. Ah, Make sure you've got drinks, you're hydrated. Couple more people arriving. Jane's arrived, good to see you. Thank you for being here, Jane. Fresh page, fresh thinking. At the top of the page for today's learning is hurdle number four. It's all about deleting, and we're gonna break that down in a minute just to help you with some ideas and habits that potentially have formed and calcified over time, <clears throat> which is actually wasting your time. So we're going to look a little bit into this. We're going to build some skills from yesterday a little bit further. And we're going to look at some of those habits that are built over time. Oh, Colin's saying he's got no audio. Colin's up. That's all right. Colin's gone out and come back in. Can everyone else hear me? Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Ready to highlight more areas that can improve on. That's what we're here for. That is what we are here for. Good. Let's dive in and do this. Let's get the intros flying as we always do. And for those that arrive in a minute, they can get caught up in just a second. Welcome to today's Sticky Learning Lunch with me, Nathan Simmons, Senior Leadership Coach and Trainer for MBM, Making Business Matter, Home of Sticky Learning. And we are the leadership development and soft skills provider for the grocery and manufacturing industry. The idea of these sessions is to give you new ideas, new concepts and approaches that are going to help you be the best version of you in the work that you do, whether it's right now while you're at home and or while you're preparing to return back to work after whatever situation you're currently in, wherever you are around the world. Fingers crossed, staying safe, staying well. This session is all about, well, it's part four of our time management and our, uh, our hurdles that we experience in time management. So we've already covered. I'm going to go through the flow chart again, just so we've got it and we're embedding this um, for each of these sessions. Top one, as we've got it, is capturing. Where are we actually capturing the information? Where is that information um, happening? Is it in the meeting? Is it in our email? Is it a voicemail? Is it um, a voice recording process? Wherever that idea is, wherever that action is, the capture point is where it's dropping into our time management system that we're looking after. Step two, emptying. We talked a bit about this yesterday in part three, uh, and it's all about how you empty those capture points. And are you doing it at regular points of, of time? Do you trust that you're going to those capture points at the right time? Uh, and making sure that you're getting that information out and you're turning it into the relevant actions or getting it into the right lists. And listing sits over here. So making sure you're doing that. Today's session is going to be about deleting, which we're going to talk about a little bit further. So these are the first four key obstacles or hurdles that we experience in our time management system. And some of us, I'm hoping, let's, let's have a quick rundown. What things have you picked up from the first three sessions to notice where your time management is falling down? Let's see at least one thing from everybody in the room. That means everybody here one thing that you know um, or notice from the last couple of sessions where you've fallen or you are falling down in your time management system. Next area we've got here is storing. And while those are coming in, I'll finish the flow chart off for you. Scheduling, which speak for themselves, and then we've got action. Whistle stop tour, 
of the time management flowchart. So what have we got? Being more aware of how and where to capture. Beautiful value. Too many lists, Victoria, amazing. Drill them down. Too many unconnected capture points. That in itself is amazing. Reduce the ones that you can't trust, connect the ones that you can trust. Ignoring distractions when other emails come in. Good. Good, 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 good. Learning how to do that. Are my capture points working? Good question. Not attending the others. So no, I procrastinate about eating a frog when it's technology based. Good. Good, good, good. There's been lots of learnings that have come out of these sticky lunches, and that's why I've enjoyed doing them so much. So where are we going to next? What we're looking at today is we're looking at deleting. And that's helping us to delete some of those distractions which have already come up in that in that box there, helping us to delete things out that are actually causing us to um, to stumble or causing us to look in the wrong direction. Because again, they're starting to build up different habits. They're starting to calcify because they became the norm. Um, and we're going to break that down a little bit further. One thing that I wanted to share with you and dive back into briefly from yesterday's session, I'm going to share my screen with you. Can you let me know if you can see it or not? Yes or no? Wait for those to come in just to make sure you're all with me. Can you see my screen? Good. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to look at today, number one, is looking at triggers for emptying. So overlapping where we were talking about yesterday, triggers for emptying. So helping you to remember whenever you're doing something, whenever you get that information, we talked about this in brief yesterday, is making sure that you have the right amount of time in your diary or in your calendar to make sure that when those actions come in, when those items come into your capture point, that you take the appropriate time to get them and empty them, okay? Because if we're not doing that, we end up with a, a notebook with actions on different pages at different points, and we've got actions over here on our emails and they're getting piled in on top of. If we're not bringing those into the right place, into the right list, we're gonna lose track of those things and it's gonna start becoming damaging. And making sure that we have clarity on that. So what we've got here, and this again comes straight off the white paper, We'll drop the link in there for the time management white paper. You can get hold of that and you can get all of these tables and forms in there as well. It's in PDF form. So you can just copy and paste it out or print it out and just work in the doorway. So here, oh, he says, I've got the triggers in there. Whoa, the wrong sheet. Apologies. So making sure that you've got the right triggers in there. I'll talk about this in a second. Looking at the habits of when you're doing those things is it going to be when you're picking up that cup of coffee is it going to be when you're closing your laptop at the end of the day is it um when you're sitting down with your cup of tea first thing in the morning what are your trigger points to make sure you're capturing that detail okay so that's the first thing you want to look at where are your trigger points and where are your habits starting to form and can you start to habit stack so what this means is it may be that you, I have my t a 10 o'clock cup of coffee and at 10 o'clock with that cup of coffee, I'm just going to make sure that I've taken the actions out of that meeting and put them into the right list. Does this make sense with everyone? Yes or no? And then I'm going to talk about this table in just a second. So that's the important, that's the first part with the triggers. The second part is that one of the things we ended on the conversation yesterday is the number of times you said yes wisely. So what this means is, and we talked about yesterday, is no one ever wants to be told no. So when your boss turns up and says, right, I need you to do this, and the last thing you want to do is say no, because then you'll be seen as the problem child. Makes sense. So then we have to understand that what we're saying yes to what are we actually saying no to by saying yes to that thing? How are we stopping ourselves or, or how are we hobbling ourselves in this situation and causing more detriment to our workload over here by taking more on because we feel we have to say yes. So when we think about it in this way, we start to guide, as I said yesterday, maybe what you need to say is, okay, that's great, 
I'm more than happy to do that. I need to make you aware of what's currently going on. I've got this, this, and this, and these are the priorities. Because when that person turns up to your desk and says, I need you to do this, they're telling you based on their map of the world, based on what they believe is most important to them, without a concern of what's important to you. It's human behavior. It's not neglect, it's not, um, um, it's not ignorance, it's human behavior, we all do it. Why? Because this is the movie of Nathan Simmons, this is the life and times of Nathan Simmons, therefore you're all extras. This table here, and everyone does it, it's not just, it's not just my, my movie, it's not the Truman Show or anything, you know? This table here is then enabling you to track the amount of times that you said yes wisely, that you helped people to see your priorities and help make a decision based on the information they, that you gave them, whether or not you're able to do that work or whether or not that timeline changed. I want this by five o'clock. Let me, let me show you what's going on in my world. Oh, okay, well actually you can get that back to me next Monday because people just throw these things out there and expect people to say yes without thinking about the other person. Because when we go into influencing skills and we're always thinking about what's in it for me, rather than putting ourselves in the shoes of the other person and say what's in it for them. And actually when we start to show what's going on in our world and we can say, okay, well actually we're happy to do that. You need to know this, this may happen and this may impact, what would you like to happen? And then you'll think about or showing, demonstrating what's in it for them by giving them a bigger picture. Then they can make a fully informed decision. This form here spreads over seven weeks. It's the number of times you said yes wisely without saying no, without telling someone I'm not gonna do that or without putting your hand up and saying no, nope, speak to the hand, about actually how you guided, how you delegated and how you helped people to reprioritize their work and still supported them at the same time. Everyone with me this? Yes or no, is this useful? Well, I'll take another mouthful of tea. This then you know, feeds into the art of delegation and looking after your relationships up, down, left, right, and supporting people get what they need and still maintaining what you need as well. So super important. This is included in the white paper. So we're all going to share that we've got the link for that. You can go and download it and you can see all something. You can see all of the exercises and the process of thinking that we're breaking down. Number two for today. Let's come up there. Unsubscribe. He says, if I can spell it. How many circular emails do you get into your spam emails are you getting into your inbox on a daily basis, personal only? How many spam emails do you think you get into your personal email on a daily basis? Let's see the numbers. What do we got? Five, 30 plus, crikey, you're, Abby, you're as bad as me. Dozens, yeah. Too many. We all sign up to these, you know, these programs or these ideas or, oh, that's a nice idea. I'll get a, a, a newsletter from you know, Green Parenting Magazine or whatever, and it just comes in. And you never look at it because you never have time to. And then how many emails at work do you get where you're CC'd into them or you're on a, you know, a, a group mailing but you don't actually look at the content because it's old hat or it doesn't concern you or you know it's been and gone, but you still get the email. How many of those do you think you get? Lynn got over 200, crikey Lynn. Now you're talking about corporate. <laughs> 50 to 75, absolutely. So in our personal inbox, we've got all this spam email coming in, all these courses, all these nice to have newsletters. And over here at work, we've then got all these other emails that are coming in where we're on subscription lists or, or group mails. And we've got all this stuff coming in. But what's happening is we're not actually looking at that data. My CC emails go to a separate inbox and get message saying they have gone there and I will look at one. So it's great shout. Let me show you this. My, is this um, Jane here has shared my CC emails go to a separate inbox and get a message saying that they have gone there and I will look at them once a week. Great prioritization. Amazing. Victoria appreciates that as well. So she's sending that, you're sending some love your way, Jane. But the problem is with this is we get these emails come in and we just, we get, so we do one. So we, we start a company, we get one. Oh yeah, I don't need that anymore. Okay, I'll just delete, just delete. And then how long you work there? Six months, 12 months, you know, 12 years. 
and you're now on multiple mailings and you spend half an hour every day deleting all your emails at least half an hour to an hour going through and deleting emails that you didn't need to receive that are just cluttering your inbox and that's where i'm talking about this calcification of your inbox and your emails coming in and I wrote down some phenomenal stats here, which will blow your brain. I found these out earlier today. It is every day. Every day in the UK, over 64,000 unnecessary emails are sent. No, sorry, 64 million. It wasn't even 64,000. 64,000 is big enough. 64 million unnecessary emails are sent on a daily basis what is going on in the world but the worst part and that's in the uk alone if everyone in the uk sent one less email a day that would save 16443 tons of co2 of carbon emissions 16443 tons of carbon a year would be saved if every adult in the UK sent one less email a day. And that carbon equates to 81,152 flights to Madrid. And so you can back this up. Actually, the person that came up with these stats and did this information is Mike Bernard Lee, sorry, Berners Lee, the brother of the man that invented the internet or the World Wide Web. So all these emails that are flying backwards and forwards and that you're clicking and you're not subscribing to are generating all this kind of this CO2 and that's actually having quite a large impact on the environment, not just on your time. So what you could be doing is actually getting yourself some free headspace to actually clear your email down. Rather than getting them, just get off the list. Someone's have come through, I just had the advice of unsubscribing a couple of weeks ago. I was worried about missing something. I was on every list and reading everything, especially during the pandemic. I've unsubscribed to so many and not missed anything. Exactly that. So this part, the first part of this exercise, for unsubscribing, you are going to grab four external and three internal. So your action from today for all of you, even if you started unsubscribing, now your action right now is to go and find four external mail lists that you're on and unsubscribe. Get off them. And then you're going to do the same with three internal mail groups that you're in. And you're going to get off them as well. Because then, you know, you're helping to, in your small way, helping to reduce the carbon footprint. But you're also helping to declutter your brain and actually get a better focus on what's coming in. How many people here, yes or no, have got really trigger happy? Maybe after holiday or come back from the weekend and you can see all your services, you've gone delete, 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 delete. How many people have done that? I mean, worst case scenario is me, I, I go to control A and then just hit delete. That's the quickest way to enter your inbox. And then what happens after you've done that, a few days later, someone comes up to me and says, oh, did you see that email? And you go, no. How many people have done that? Quick show of hands in the yes, it's yes. Already come, yes. Because your brain is attempting to declutter, you just see all this stuff, and maybe it's from the same sender or the title's a bit similar, or you just missed it and you're going, blah, 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 you because know, you, you know the content is pointless. But this habit is causing you a detriment for when that thing you need to be working on, you've already reassociated it and deleted it, and the action doesn't get taken. Seeing some set after holidays, I sort by sending then deleting chunks. Agree that I do that as well. But if we help to declutter our thinking, we can get a better focus rather than spending that half hour, 45 minutes in the morning deleting a bunch of emails that we didn't even need and that you won't miss the content on. Now, even go back to the person, if, if that MI or if that report is no longer needed in the business tool, go back and tell the person to stop running the report. Save everyone, save everyone that amount of time. If you work in a large organization and people are spending you know, an hour or half an hour every day and multiple people are doing this, deleting multiple emails that they don't need to be part, how much time would you actually save the business? Quite a lot, I would think. So your first action or idea here is to unsubscribe. Start clearing it down. 
just take and if you are you know sign up to multiple emails and you're getting hundreds of these things yes it will take you a little bit of time to do it but it is worth doing it just clears the mind you know it's the, the, the magic of tidying up i think it's marie kondo's book you know the magic of tidying but we do this with our email as well we live in an intellectually based civilization now it's more about what we're doing in, in the the cerebral uh, elements of our body rather than the physical so our decluttering yes is spatial it's also cerebral so we need to clear that down so mentally we feel like we're clearing down so get rid of the stuff that you don't need if you don't need it to come in deflect it in fact i'm sorry not even deflect it just turn it off so it doesn't come to you in full stop super important the idea is by doing this that we are decluttering psychologically emptying the headspace in the question box Name me two emails that you can get off of immediately. One from your personal mailing list and one from your, you know, the group emails you're on. One from each in the question box. Name me two email groups that you can get rid of immediately. While we're doing that, I'm going to get number three on the board. Brush party, don't really have group emails, but I am cutting promotions now. Good. Cornerstone, daily ops stats, yeah, great. Direct reports, group at work, they can report to me by exception. Good. Baby related, my daughter is nine. Yeah, that time's been gone. Good shout, oh, Victoria. And you still get the email, but you think, oh, maybe that'll be useful. Oh, maybe. No, your daughter isn't getting any younger. Um, spam emails, I've genuinely never signed up to receive. Absolutely. And you may find some of those, and being mindful is just making sure that you, when you opt out of them, that you opt out any, any future marketing or affiliate associates or whatever, so you don't actually end up getting five more emails in place. So this is the first element. Clear down some of the stuff that's coming in. Number three is make it easier. So what we're going to do is, or another exercise we want to do, is we want to start looking at those emails we are CC'd in. So maybe we are getting those internal group ones, or... You know, people are letting us know certain things and you're being DC'd in, is then start to think about, do I actually need to be in this? And what we do is we use the ABC rule. What does this mean? A, a CC'd email, nice and easy. So you're acknowledging that you've got a cc'd email you've received it you are cc'd in okay b stands for brief quick scan i have a quick look at the content of the cc'd email do i need to take action do i not and c stands for two things do i care is it crap and if it's not, or if you don't, and it is, then you just delete it. But you don't want to spend your time um, getting caught up in multiple emails. Something that we do at MBM, which is super handy, Darren helps us out with this, which is brilliant. Uh, prime example. So Sarah is supporting me doing this. Um, she, you know, she's the, the technical element of, of, this, of this presentation. Testimonial comes in. Testimonial comes in from one of the audience here, and they're saying da 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 da. And maybe Darren's having a chat with that person. Um, the testimonial comes to Darren. Darren then shares it to Sarah and says, Hey, Sarah, what I need you to do is can you get this onto the web page and make it look like this on the registration page? Has everyone seen the testimonials on the registration page now? Yes or no? Because there are some phenomenal ones there. Stuart's on there, Colin's on there, now there's some uh, Petra's on there. It is phenomenal. Okay, some of the responses and the people that are getting involved. So Darren gets that from maybe LinkedIn. He sends it to Sarah, let Sarah know, can you do this? So Sarah's got an action, she's the main recipient. In there though, I am CC'd in. What Darren then puts in there is it says, Nathan, CC, feel good. That's it. Right now, all I'm doing is looking at the email, seeing the testimonial, 
I get the feel good because Darren's pointing out this is what you need to because he's telling me what's what I need to do or feel out of it. And this is why the email's there. Therefore, I know that I don't need to respond to that email. So if we start doing this as a habit or as a behavior for other people, it makes other people suddenly realize, well, do I need to respond? And we give them clarity. And then we give them certain. We make them feel included so they know why they're getting the email, that they know they don't need to take any more action. And we reduce down the clutter for them or any questions or time they're spending deleting their emails. And we make their day more fluid. So every time we get an email that we're CC in on, A, B, C, move forward. Is this useful? Yes or no? Would this help with some of the CC uh, emails you're getting coming in? And look, it's not an overnight fix, I get it. You know, there's a handful of people in this training session, there's a handful of people that are now thinking maybe this way to looking at their emails. It's not gonna be everybody in your company. But if you start doing it, other people might start noticing how it makes them feel, how it makes their email life better, and maybe they'll start doing it, okay? Or maybe you go and train your team. Say, look, you know, when you're doing these things, can you just let people know this, this, and this? It would be really helpful. Just helping them to kind of make things easier. It's sparking ideas on auto rules as well. Absolutely good. So, you know, you can set up your mailboxes to do some of these things. But if you can also save anyone sending an email so you haven't even got to check that box, you can also improve it for others. Two, if for action, CC is just for info. Absolutely. Um, so I only need to respond if two, not CC. And you might want to put that in the email. Just say, yep, you've been CC, no action required. FYI, FYI only, bam. And give people that clarity. And you're not cluttering up their inbox. And maybe they stop cluttering up your inbox. Hope this is useful. What are you taking away from today? I know Victoria's got some, getting some new ideas about auto rules coming in. Um, we've got some other stuff. What has been useful from today's session? And while that is coming in, I dove straight in. As always, I got overexcited, dove straight in with the content. If you have not registered for tomorrow's session, okay, if you have not registered for next week's session, the time is now, as always. The link for, for the future sessions is gonna be in the chat box for you now. You can click on there and register for those future sessions. Absolutely vital, because we've still got another, how many have we done? One, two, three, four. We've got another three elements of time management. And then we're gonna get into category management, and then we're gonna get into leadership skills as well. Get registered. The other thing is as well, coaching cards. I've got a big passion for these, because you know there's, a, there's an interesting array of, of skills and concepts in here from time management, um, to category management cards, phenomenal. And also, you know, we've got the, the leadership model, which we're going to be looking at in a couple of weeks' time. Grow coaching cards, mental health conversations, a phenomenal selection of phenomenal questions that will help you get incredible results with your people inside your business. And they're only five pound a pack, which is ridiculous. So before Darren changes his mind and puts the price up, click the link for the cards and go and get your packs now. What have we got coming in? Uh, email declutter, amazing. Unsubscribe, good. The actions, first steps, and saying yes wisely, brilliant. Auto rules and the impact we can have on our environment by sending less emails, not to mention our time management. It blew my brain when I read that. Um, the auto rule for emails, uh, and that I'm CC'd in is very useful. Good, okay. Um, how many times you have said yes wisely, love this idea, amazing. Is it helping you to build the habit? Okay. We, we do it as parents, we do it as leaders or, or people in team, and we say things reflexively, reflective, no, reflexively, like, yes, I'll do that, yes, I'll do that, and then you wonder why you're not getting anything done. Take control of our time emails, exactly that, Petra. Amazing. Look, amazing session today. Questions, we've got a couple of minutes. What questions have you got for me right now about where we are with deleting content or capturing or listing um, and emptying? in the time management hurdles? What questions have you got for me right now? None thanks, it's really starting to build and gain momentum. Abby, thank you very much for being here, it's appreciated. Love the feedback. Starting to see how these link into one to the other. It's gone quiet. As I say, it's either everyone's everyone's comfortable or the questions are going to be really long. As if any of those come in, just say, look, 
you've got this you've got the white paper there for the time management side of things you've got the the future sessions booked in there and you've got the mbm coaching cards link there to get your decks of cards as well phenomenal i mean really enjoying the session as always it's i love doing this and sharing this if you or your team would benefit from a deeper conversation about any of the subjects we've covered any of the soft skills not my favorite words any of the skills and leadership concepts that we share and that I deliver, and you would like to have a deeper conversation, a deeper experience of this, whether it's in a virtual classroom or whether it's live face-to-face, -face, now is the time to book in. Uh, we can drop the link in there for the virtual classrooms and to contact us. Let's have a conversation. Let's see how we can impact and develop your teams to be the best versions of themselves through the skills that we're sharing. Really appreciate the engagement today. Really appreciate you all. Um, thank you so very much for being here. Great session that's built a good picture of how to make good changes. Oh, I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Everyone, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at one o'clock um, for the next instalment. And we're going to be covering, oh, I don't know where we're going. We might be looking at storing tomorrow, but I'll, go, I'll, I'll share a bit more detail about that tomorrow. Have a lovely rest of your day, and I look forward to seeing you then.